This is what the UFC men's bantamweight rankings looked like in February 2013. This is when Dominic Cruz was the champion, but was facing injuries, therefore Henan Barrow and Uri Faber fought for the interim title, which Henan Barrow won. So today we're going to look at how we got from this point right here to where we are today, because looking at these rankings, a lot has changed. So let's get into it. Henan Barrow submitted Michael McDonald, which bumped McDonald down to number three. A week later, Uriah Faber submitted Ivan Mendravar. Brad Pickett then defeated Mike Easton, which didn't change anything. Uriah Faber got his second win of the year, submitting Scott Jorgensen. George Roop then TKO'd Brian Bowles, bumping Bowles off of the top 10 rankings. Hafiela Sunsau then submitted Vaughn Lee. A random shuffle in July put TJ Dillashaw up to number 9. Michael McDonald then submitted Brad Pickett, bumping Pickett off of the top five. Uri Faber then got a decision win over Alcantara, his third win of 2013. Wilson Hayes then got a decision win over Ivan Menjavar, bumping Menjavar off of the top 10. Henan Barrow then TKO'd Eddie Wineland to defend his UFC interim bantamweight title. Hafiela Sunsau then got a decision win over TJ Dillashaw, bumping both him and Dillashaw up one spot. Takeya Mizugaki then got a decision win over Nam Fan. Zach Makovsky defeated Scott Jorgensen at flyweight, bumping Scott Jorgensen off of the bantamweight rankings. And at the end of 2014, this is what the UFC men's bantamweight rankings look like. As you can see, not a whole lot of change in the top five, although we did get the introduction of TJ Dillashaw, Takeya Mizugaki, and Yura Alcantara into the top 10. Let's see what 2015 has in store. Right off the bat, Dominic Cruz was injured, pulled from his title defense, and stripped of the championship. Henan Brow is now your bantamweight champion. TJ Dillashaw then got a decision win over Mike Easton, bumping him into the top five. Eddie Wineland then got a TKO win over Yves Jobing. Henan Brow then defended his bantamweight championship, TKOing Uriah Faber. Yuri Alicantara then got a decision win over Wilson Hayes, dropping Dominic Cruz to the number 10 spot. Hafiel Sunsau then got a decision win over Pedro Munoz. Brad Pickett defeated Neil Siri at flyweight, bumping Pickett off of the bantamweight rankings. A random shuffle then put Hafiel Sunsau ahead of Michael McDonald in the rankings. Johnny Eduardo then got a shocking KO win over Eddie Wineland. Eduardo made his debut and Wineland only bumped down one spot. Takeo Mizugaki got a decision win over Francisco Rivera. And then the shocker of all shockers, TJ Dillashaw TKO'd Henan Barrow to become the UFC Bantamweight Champion. Alcantara got a KO over Von Lee, bumping him up to the number 7 position. Brian Caraway submitted Eric Perez, giving him his top 10 debut and bumping Cruz off of the rankings. Yves Jobang got a decision win over Mike Easton, bumping Easton off of the top 10. Uriah Faber then submitted Alex Caceres, which actually gave Caceres a number 10 position at Bantamweight. In his first title defense, TJ Dillashaw KO'd Joe Soto after Joe Soto was a last minute replacement for Henan Barrow. A random shuffle put Takeya Mizugaki into the top five and Eddie Wineland out of the top five. Masanori Kenahara got a decision win over Alex Caceres, which gave Dominic Cruz his position back at number 10. Yuri Alcantara got a decision win over Russell Doan. And then in his return fight, Dominic Cruz got a KO win over Takeya Mizugaki, bumping him all the way up to the number two position at Bantamweight. Hafiel Sunsau then got a decision win over the number 10, Brian Caraway. Uri Faber then submitted the unranked Francisco Rivera. Henan Barrow in his return fight got a submission win over Mitch Gagnon. And at the end of 2014, this is what the UFC men's bantamweight rankings look like. Yes, a massive change in the rankings with TJ Dillashaw winning the bantamweight championship, Dominic Cruz falling off of the rankings, and then back up to number two. This kind of rocked the entire division because for so long, Dominic Cruz was the man on top and Henan Barrow was that, that second piece. And TJ Dillashaw, who would have expected that the first team alpha male fighter to win a championship would be TJ Dillashaw? 
So let's see, going into 2015, how things change up. Frankie Science got a decision win over Alcantara, dropping Alcantara down to number 10. Aljamain Sterling then got a submission win over Takei Mizugaki, giving Sterling his rankings debut. Uriah Faber then lost a featherweight fight against Frankie Edgar, dropping him one spot. Brian Caraway got a decision win over Eddie Wineland, bumming him up to number 6 and Wineland off of the top 10. TJ Dillashaw then TKO'd Barrow in the rematch, bumping Barrow down one spot. A random shuffle put Aljamain Sterling one spot ahead of Brian Caraway. Takeya Mizugaki then got a decision win over George Root. Michael McDonald was dealing with an injury and was inactive, so he dropped two spots in the rankings. Thomas Almeida got a KO win over Anthony Burchek, putting Almeida up to the number six spot. Aljamain Sterling then submitted Johnny Eduardo. Uriah Faber then got a decision win over Frankie Sainz, putting him up to number three. And this is what the UFC men's bantamweight rankings looked like at the end of 2015. So the biggest change in 2015 was the rise of Aljamain Sterling, all the way up to number five, and Thomas Almeida at number six. So we're seeing this new crop of fighters that weren't around in the WEC days, now charging up the rankings. The champion TJ Dillashaw, Sterling, Almeida. But I got a feeling that someone else is going to enter that crop and have a shocking 2016. Let's see. But before we get into 2016, please go down and like the video and consider subscribing to SB Nation MMA. Put out a lot of good content and I have a... Uh, I have a special video coming out for the next rankings video. You've been asking for it for a long time, but you won't get to see it unless you hit that subscription button. So please do that. Thank you very much. Now let's get on to 2016. In Michael McDonald's return, he got a decision win over Kanahara, bumping him up to number six. Dominic Cruz then defeated TJ Dillashaw to win back his UFC Bantamweight Championship. John Dodson then got a TKO win over Manny Gamburian and made his top 10 debut at Bantamweight. A random shuffle put Aljamain Sterling one spot ahead of Hafiel Sunsau. Henan Barrow was then defeated by Jeremy Stevens at Featherweight, bumping Henan Barrow off of the Bantamweight rankings. At that same event, Brian Caraway defeated Aljamain Sterling, bumping Caraway up four spots and Sterling down to number six. And one more Bantamweight fight at the event, Cody Garbrandt KO'd Thomas Almeida and gave Garbrandt his debut in the Bantamweight rankings. Dominic Cruz defended his title, getting a decision win over Uriah Faber in their trilogy fight. A random shuffle then put John Lineker up to number 8. TJ Dillashaw then got a decision win over Hafiel Sunsau. A week later, John Lineker KO'd Michael McDonald, bumping Lineker into the top 5 at Bantamweight. Cody Garbrandt TKO'd Takeya Mizugaki, bumming him up two spots to number six. Jimmy Rivera then got a decision win over Uriah Faber, giving Rivera his top 10 debut at number seven. A random shuffle then put Rivera ahead of Faber and put Lineker in at number three. Lineker then defeated John Dodson, putting him up to number two with a random shuffle between Caraway and Rivera. Cody Garbrandt was then given a title shot against Dominic Cruz, which put him up in the rankings to number five. Uriah Faber then got a decision win over Brad Pickett, and then after the fight retired, which bumped him out of the Bantamweight rankings. TJ Dillashot, number one, got a decision win over the number two, John Lineker. Cody Garbrandt then got a decision win over Dominic Cruz, becoming the UFC Bantamweight champion. And this is what the UFC men's bantamweight rankings look like at the end of 2016. Yes, Cody Garbrandt taking over the bantamweight rankings, going from unranked to champion in one year. A dominant year for Garbrandt, and in a year that Dominic Cruz won back his title. But that didn't really matter in the end. We also had John Lineker and Jimmy Rivera cracking the top five, making major moves for the division. This was a, a pivotal year in the Bantamweight division. Just look at the top five. That is a lot of changes. So let's see if these huge changes continue in 2017. Hafiel Sunsau got a decision win over Aljamain Sterling, putting him ahead of John Lineker in the rankings. 
Michael McDonald was then signed by Bellator, which bumped him off of the UFC Bantamweight ranking. Aljamain Sterling then got a decision win over Augusto Mendez. John Dodson got a decision win over Eddie Wineland, bumping Wineland off of the top 10. Matthew Lopez then TKO Johnny Eduardo, bumping Eduardo back off of the top 10. Hafiel Sunsau then got a decision win over Marlon Marias, which gave Marias his debut in the UFC's rankings. Jimmy Rivera then got a decision win over Thomas Almeida, bumping him up to the number three spot at bantamweight. Aljamain Sterling then got a decision win over Henan Barrow, bumping him up one spot to number seven. John Lineker got a decision win over Marlon Vera. And then a random shuffle put Marlon Marias one spot ahead of Thomas Almeida at number nine. TJ Dillashaw then TKO'd Cody Garbrandt in a heated contest. TJ Dillashaw is again the UFC bantamweight champion. Rafael Sunsau then got a decision win over Matthew Lopez, bumping him up to number three. Marlon Marais then ends the year getting a decision win over John Dodson, bumping him up to number seven. But wait, he then in December KOs Aljamain Sterling. That bumps him up to the number five spot at bantamweight and Sterling down to number nine. And this is the UFC men's bantamweight rankings at the end of 2017. Yes, the big storyline is TJ Dillashaw getting his championship back. That constant shuffle up at the top of the bantamweight rankings between Dominic Cruz, Cody Garbrandt, and TJ Dillashaw. But as well, we have Marlon Marias not only making his rankings debut, but entering the top five. We've seen that almost every year in the Bantamweight division, where somebody goes from being an unranked fighter to into the top five. It's one of the best qualities of the Bantamweight division and why this video has been so exciting, is that you have guys that aren't even on the radar in one year and then make their way up to either a championship position or a championship contending position. So let's see if that happens in 2018. Rob Font got a TKO win over Thomas Almeida, bumping Almeida off of the top 10. Dodson then got a decision win over Pedro Munoz, bumping Dodson up to number 7. Cody Stamen then got a decision win over Brian Caraway, bumping Caraway only down one spot. Aljamain Sterling then got a decision win over Brett Johns. John Lineker then KO'd Brian Kelleher. Marlon Marias then got a KO win over Jimmy Rivera, leapfrogging him in the rankings to get to that number four spot. And then in an odd one, Brian Caraway was removed from the rankings. And even though he has a fight scheduled right now, he still hasn't been added back onto the Bantamweight rankings. Hafiel Sunsau then got a decision win over Rob Fawn. TJ Dillashaw in the rematch against Cody Garprant, TKO'd him, defending successfully his Bantamweight championship. Aljamain Sterling then submitted Cody Stamen, bumping him up one spot, but Jimmy Rivera got a decision win over John Dodson, which put Dodson down one spot. And in October of 2018, where we are right now, here is what the UFC men's Bantamweight rankings look like. As you saw, not a whole lot of change in 2018, more just guys establishing where they are in the Bantamweight rankings. TJ Dillashaw remaining the champion, and Marlon Marias continuing to dominate the division, moving up to number four. Now the interesting thing is that TJ Dillashaw isn't booked for a fight in 2018, so it looks like this is how the division will end up looking like at the end of 2018. But we do have a potential title fight between Dillashaw and Marias on the horizon. It just seems like the logical conclusion, unless the UFC does go with Cejudo versus Dillashaw, which I hope they don't because I want to see the Bantamweight division move, and I think Marias has a really good shot against Dillashaw. So thank you so much for watching. I had a fun time doing this Bantamweight video, just a lot of chaos at the top of the division, and a lot of quick risers, which always makes a rankings video a fun time. Let me know uh, what video you want me to do next, which is kind of a joke because we're, we're done. I mean, there's no other divisions left other than divisions that started in 2013, 14, or 15. If you want me to do a flyweight video, a women's strawweight video, let me know, but uh, it seems like we're likely going to get the pound for pound video next, which will come out probably in another two weeks because that one might take a bit of time. 
Anyways, thank you so much for watching. Please like this video if you haven't already and consider subscribing to SBNMMA. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the rankings.